As we continue the open series, I'm reminding you that the most important thing at this moment is to find the Word of God. This is the absolute authority, and I won't stop saying this over and over. That is, that we cannot rely on man or women telling us what to do. Not even me, no one. But you on your own are called to go to the Word of God and to know that the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. This is what needs to be done now. My only job here is to send you back to the Word of God, is to make sure that you are spending time with the Word of God, the Bible, the 66 books. It's the only way we all have to maintain our communication and relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ who is speaking with us at a higher than ever rate as he is pouring his spirit upon all flesh as it is said in Acts 2.17. So if you do hear anything against the word of God, any deviation, any removal, any disagreement with any parts of the word of God, you know this is not the truth because the word of god as in john 1 1 is jesus christ of nazareth our lord and our savior the same one who spoke worlds into existence the same one who in genesis 1 3 spoke the heavens and the earth into being. So we do not have the day and the hour because so it is said in the Word of God. And while on this very channel, incredible revelations and wisdom has been given as per the window of time within which we understand we are pointed towards for the second coming and most importantly the rapture and subsequent tribulation still we do not know the actual day and hour and so i would want to imagine the idea of being prepared for an event and as you're preparing for the event imagine yourself looking at your watch all the time constantly looking at the watch instead of getting ready for the event the whole idea is not to keep looking at the watch, but to get prepared for the event, knowing already the time of the event, so that by the time your car comes to pick you up, you're ready. But if you're spending the entire time of preparation looking at the watch, when the car comes, you will not be ready because instead of preparing, you are looking at the watch. Now we are absolutely called to be watching and praying. But when we look at the meaning of the word watching, which is the same in Daniel 12, 12, we are understanding that watching means longing, waiting for in a longing, desiring kind of way, which means our eyes are not on the watch, but is on we watch what we watch for, which is the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I hope you paid attention to what I just said, because this is the key to understand that the Lord is asking for us to be watching for him, not for the exact time. If you're looking at the watch, your car might be passing by. So start watching as in longing for the Lord while you know the times because the wisdom of the Lord is being poured upon us in this very hour. So to summarize, we are given a incredible insight and wisdom into the window of time with some great detail, as you've seen in the Esther series, in the Temple 46 series, and many other series I've been posting on this channel. But that does, does not mean that we're not capable of error and that we might not understand it perfectly well. We do our absolute best 
to try to put the pieces together because the Lord wants us to seek as in Proverbs 25 2. Proverbs 25 2 as well as Hebrews 11 6 do tell us that the Lord wants us to be seeking and that the truth will be given to us as in Matthew 7 7 as we ask seek and knock but again we're asking seeking and knocking for the Lord out of the love that we have for him out of putting him first and above all other things letting go of the world worldliness and any of the seduction and lusts of the world for which we know if we do have the love of the world we do not have the love of the father so finally i invite you to join our zoom call is usually on sundays at 6 p.m eastern standard time and this is a time of this very video things of course can change but this is a time where i spend sometimes a few hours explaining and going over all these concepts of course i cannot do this on a short youtube video this is an invite if you want to join us send an email and you will be added to the list and given the times where we meet as i said typically is on weekends so i'm going to break this message into two parts as the introduction was equally important to the message so look out for the second part of this message as well in 2 Peter 3, verse 14, Peter is reminding us that the Lord is coming for a blameless, spotless, and at peace bride. These are the characteristics of who the Lord is seeking and coming back for. This is very important for everybody to know because the Lord is coming for his bride. And I want to share, share some light and shed some light on what I have been learning about who this bridegroom ultimately really is. In John 20, verse 11 through 16, we read the account of Mary Magdalene standing at the sepulcher looking for the Lord after Peter and John went back home. Now, what's important about Mary is that she was there early in the morning. And if you look at the calendar series, you understand that it's probably a 12 hours gap between the time that Mary meets the Lord and then the evening when the rest of the apostle meet the Lord. Now, I said that it's possible that this 12 hour gap might represent a 12 month period during the tribulation giving Mary the possibility in our understanding that she might be representing the bride taken earlier than the tribulation and perhaps of other events coming. Now again, if you look at that calendar, this calculated to a seven plus one years in that Thomas, which in the same chapter 20, is being meeting or will be meeting with the Lord eight days later, therefore making Mary a seven plus one days earlier, which is also possibly a seven plus one years earlier. Now, the reason why Mary Magdalene represents the bride is because in Luke 8 verse 2, she is delivered of seven devils. Now, in Matthew 12, verses 43 to 45, the Lord talks about in the context of what really looks like a discussion on the end times, seven plus one devils. So let's see what he says. So in Matthew 12, 43 says, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walks through dry places seeking rest and find it none then he said i will return into my house from whence i came out and when he's come he find it empty swept and garnish then goes he and takes with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself and they enter in and dwell there and the last state of that man is worse than the first even so shall it be unto this wicked generation. 
So we understand that the seven spirits that came out of Mary represents these seven years of tribulation, plus one, which is the additional devil, giving us this eight day or eight year count from Mary to Thomas. Now, what's important to understand is that Mary meets the Lord alone and first. It's clear that the Lord was in a position where it could have met both Mary, Peter, and John, which were there just moments before, but it does not meet all of them, but just Mary. This is important because it, she is the first person who meet the resurrected Lord alone. And so let's look into Mary even more because we believe and understand that she is the representation of the bride of Christ and the bride group for the reasons we've just explained. Now, in Ephesians 5.23, it says, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. So Christ is the head of the church, but there's also a relationship with the wife, where he says that the husband is the head of the wife, but then the Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. So I want you to pay this attention to this relation between, between the husband and the wife, the head, the body, the church, and Christ. Now, when we look at Mary Magdalene, the meaning of Magdalene means from the city of Magdala. And the city of Magdala means the tower. So in essence, Mary means Mary the tower. So when we go to the Song of Solomon, look at chapter 7, verse 4, it says, Thy neck is as a tower of ivory, thine eyes like the fish pools of Eshbon by the gate of Bathrabim. Thy nose is as the tower of Lebanon, which looketh towards Damascus. Let me read again the first sentence. Thy neck is as a tower of ivory. This means as the Song of Solomon also represents the bride of Christ in this typology, that the neck or the Magdala represent the bride, the bride being the neck, which connects the head to the body. So Mary Magdalene represents the bride. The bride is that part of the body, the neck, which connects to the head directly, or it's the closest part to the head, which is Christ, and connects to the rest of the body, ultimately becoming one body. But the potential of this being the most significant position in close proximity to the head makes it so that the bride has a particular and unique role. Now, I can't say for sure that I know the absolute difference between the bride, the bride and the church. But as we will see in the second part of this series, there's a very likely possibility that there might be a distinction and a fate to the bride group versus the rest of the church. And I'll explain that in the next video. Ultimately, Mary Magdalene stays at the tomb, and we'll explain that in part two of this particular video, how she does not give up. She's constantly looking. She's searching. And while she does not understand all things, and she doesn't even recognize the Lord immediately, we will see that she repents or she turns. And by turning, she turns to the Lord. Her eyes are going back to the Lord over and over. Yes, yeah, she is worried and preoccupied with what happens at the tomb and the fact that the body is not there, but she's constantly, ultimately turning to the Lord. This is what the Lord is calling us to do now. Yes, we're watching and we're understanding the time with great detail, but we're not keeping our eyes on the watch. Instead, we're getting rid of idols or anything that comes above the Lord and placing our gaze and our attention onto the Lord, knowing that he is close, is asking us to keep our eyes on him and to continue to share the gospel with all those who are still many, many who need to hear the news, the gospel of salvation. 
I hope this message message blessed you. I thank you for your prayers and support. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.